what most people know us for now uh, is stem cells, you know, the, the CPI model. But there was CHIPSA uh, well before that. And uh, we're actually in, in the middle of the uh, name change, Translational Advanced Medicine TAM Center, uh, Translational Advanced Medical Center, I should say, TAM Center. Um, and we're really going, you know, not not dismissing what we did with Chipsa because I actually we did a, a lot of great work, but evolving to where it's all science based. Mm -hmm. You know, we were having the discussion yesterday. Um, it's going to be hard for someone to look at what we're doing and say this isn't science. We could have bioethical questions on how to sure. how th that we need to solve, and I'm you know I'm fine having those conversations. I think about it a lot. I know you think about it a lot as well. Uh, our, our whole team does. But, um, you know, what do you see as the potential for the lab that we're setting up between the cellular lab and the genomics lab, digital pathology, all of those things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and some of the things we were talking about yesterday, those extra, let's say, 10 steps or uh, 10 other things that we need to figure out in between. What do you see as the potential for uh, what we're building? Well, the, the potential is that starting from scratch, as you put it, you can start to assemble pieces um, based on what the question is that needs to be answered, okay? And, and you can approach it in a novel way, not necessarily replicating what someone else has. You know, I once had, um, we were working in a pediatric uh, uh, NICU, mm -hmm. and a colleague of mine brought me in because we were working in pediatric ARDS. And there was an infant on the lying on the bed. The parents were in the room. There were five people looking at this instrument. Baby was strapped in. And the instrument had five dials, basically, to make it simple. And they were turning the dials and seeing what the response was and turning the dials. And we spent about an hour there and we walked out, the, my colleague was the head of the NICU, and he said, so what, do you, what did you think of what you saw? <laughs> and I said, well, from my perspective, I just saw a random walk in five dimensions for an hour <laughs> because they couldn't tell you if they repeated anything, mm. okay? And I don't know what the coordination was of, well, the dial, you know, because I'm not a clinician, of course. I know that there was experience and, and so on that they were looking for and, and response. And a month later, I was at a Midwestern medical center, a big medical center. And I happened to be talking to the head of training, MSTP, Medical Science Training Program. And I said to him, I said, you know, humans are really good in two dimensions number of humans are okay in three dimensions. Four dimensions is very hard. Five dimensions is impossible, okay? So how do you train your physicians to deal with this? Because it is a five-dimensional problem. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said, well, we only really train them on two dials at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I said to him, you know, so why do you have an instrument with five dials? Hmm. I said, is it because the engineer knew that each dial was worth $25,000 <laughs> and you put five dials on the box and it's now 125,000 hmm. instead of 50,000? And, and, and he laughed and I said, or is it because the hospital across the road has the same thing? Mm -hmm. And he says, because the hospital across the road has the same thing. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> people are going to expect five dials. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. And so, Part of the challenge from the way we build models is we treat disease as a process and a chronic disease also has human development under that. And the challenge of that, of having disease as a process and not a state, because we talk about a disease state, is that you have to look at how things change over time. Mm -hmm. And that is a big challenge because if a patient comes in with a disease, a presentation of symptoms, 
it's not ethical to not treat them and just allow them to progress to understand what the disease is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you may do it for a small amount of time to see if they resolve, mm -hmm. but you're not allowing them to run the full course that way. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know what the real natural course of a disease really looks like, mm -hmm. how many dimensions in terms of clinical parameters it involves. And if you intercede that at different points in time, and you're only extracting the data points at that point in time, you may diagnose it differently because different diseases may cross at different points in time mm -hmm. as they evolve. And now what you're trying to do with technology, diagnostics and biomarkers, is you have something that can make a measurement. Mm -hmm. And that technology and that measurement, you're trying to figure out how to align that with that disease process. Mm -hmm. And it may be very different at different stages of that disease process. But if you don't know the disease process, mm -hmm. it's very hard to do that alignment. Yep. And so you're constantly fighting that battle, mm -hmm. that challenge of getting that proper alignment to be able to really hone in on what we call, what is the, the disease vector in high dimensions how far along that vector a patient is, which is their stage, and then how quickly are they progressing? Mm -hmm. Because if they're progressing slowly, you manage them differently than if they're progressing rapidly. Mm -hmm. But if you take those three parameters, then what you really have is you have a tensor, not even a vector. Mm -hmm. and, and I call it sort of the, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle of disease, because you can't measure where a patient is on that vector and how rapidly they're progressing at the same time, mm -hmm. which yeah. gets to the physics part. Right. So that's the kind of challenge we have. And I don't know that we'll completely resolve it. A lot of the new digital monitoring, 24 hour monitoring can help give us a much better profile mm -hmm. of these changes over time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of the big values of how we should start to use that data. Yes. But it's still going to be a very complex marriage of the data, data with points. understanding what a disease process is.